and welcome to another episode of, to be honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. With the intro colossal, you still sent, said it's a show with a nerd, but nerd's not here at the moment. He's dead. He died. Yeah. I, th- I think he's taking a leave of absence. I don't think he died. He may have also just taken a break to focus on his actual projects, but you'll never know which one's true. He might be dead. Oh, this muffin is so good. <laughs> Are you just eating ass? This is, this is what you're in for it's without nerd. This is what you're getting without nerd. We got some muffin. <laughs> what flavor is it? It's blueberry. I mean, this is this is actually probably like the nicest muffin and I've ever had. And we've got Colossal eating a fucking muffin. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about iDubs, yeah? No, let's um, talk about the muffin, actually. You want to talk about Can we talk muffin? about the muffin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's not much I can say about it. It's got blueberries in it, but it's good. Like, it's really good. Out of 10, like 9 out of 10. And it's from a, like, a local like Mexican bakery. Rated- or what? You've rated that muffin higher than how you rated the Batman film, by the way. <laughs> he gave the Batman film a four out of ten. It wasn't very one. good. But, it was very much gives overrated. Muffin, what did he give the muffin? An eight or a nine? Nine. <laughs> nine. nine. <laughs> I'm fucking yeah. deaf. I gave average, it a nine. Average Zelda reviewer. I'm sorry, but that movie is just so overrated. It's ridiculous. I mean, the Riddler was good. <laughs> okay, the Riddler was ten. good, but the rest of the movie was not great. The soggy fucking muffin. Yeah, nine out of ten. Speaking of rating things, let's uh, rate Idubs new video. Yeah, I give it a two out of ten. Not very good. Not very fucking good. Uh, kind of dog shit, really. I know we talked about Idubs last episode, and uh, we talked about him on the Patreon episode as well. If you haven't listened to that, five dollars a month, well worth your money. Uh, but yeah, this is the last time we're going to talk about him. Last time, although I did invite him on the podcast, so yeah. Well, he's not going to come on, but he might. He might. Oh, you sent the he tweet. Might. Did you DM him or? No, he sent a live tweet. Put it right in the spotlight. I invited him on the show. Or I invited him, you know, for my main channel, second channel, his channel, I don't really care. I could just see you giving all these rules, he joins, and you just say, yeah, your wife's a whore. And then he leaves, understandably, (laughs) and that's the whole interview. Okay, but I mean, she is a whore. Right, I I think I've got a small feeling he would not want to come on now that you've said that. Just a very small inkling. You can be a whore and not necessarily have sex with men for money, all right? Do you say that's fair? Would you say that's a fair sentence? Yeah. Yeah, so she's a whore. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> OnlyFans? She, she's making money, you know, by selling herself. Her pussy, her pictures of her pussy, videos of her pussy, her tits, whatever. Why, why are we spending the opening 10 minutes just debating please come on the this? Pod, please come on the podcast, <laughs> Ian. Because Colossal will have a great conversation with you. I think it would be good. I think it would be good. I'm allowed to make like so. one I joke think, about her. I think it could be an interesting video or if it was just you and him. If you were to not insult his wife, if you were actually just hitting the hard hitting oh, questions. I mean, me and Ian, I dubs, we got, we got so many things in common. I mean, we're about the same age, similar. I mean, I'm three years older than him. We made the same content yeah. um, for a long period of time. Um, we have stopped making that content now for different reasons. But his was a ch- yeah, his was a choice. Yours is I'm lazy <laughs> and demonetized. <laughs> oh, this muffin is so good, man! Please come back, nerd. <laughs> Last episode we did, I said that. I mean, Jay said it was pretty much nothing to do with money, and I said no, actually, you know, it's got a little bit to do with money, obviously. And now my opinion is still the same, but it's got more to do with money, if that makes any sense. Because last time I said it's got a little bit. Last time you were like, because you were like, I don't think he's genuine until he deletes the videos he's profiting off, and he's deleted them or unlisted them, right? So I'm unlisted. surprised. I'm surprised your opinion hasn't been like, ah, oh, maybe he's serious. You're just saying, nope, it's definitely for money now. Uh, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said I think that might be one of the variables, one of the reasons why money might be a factor. Well, some people have said that he wants that kind of H3 crowd. That's why he's kind of closing the chapter on the kind of edgy past he's got. Because he has been, if you went through his likes on Twitter, he was liking some people in support and they were actually like just people with like seven followers. But they're in support of him. Uh, yeah, if you've seen Twitter lately, their response has been real positive to the video. So he, if he is trying to cultivate the H3 fan base then he's doing a good job i think I, I i personally don't see a problem with him like trying to shut the chapter on his like you know when he was edgy and shit because i i've definitely like i don't either yeah like, i've definitely said shit in videos in the past that i'm like okay well i i that came back in my recommended four years later i want to die now the cynical inward <laughs> compilation yeah, the, the amount of times <laughs> there's literally a twitter account that like will post me saying the n-word it's just like oh fuck it's so embarrassing like yeah. i actually want to die i just want to curl up and die please 
But I, I, if he wants to shut that chapter in his life, that, that's totally fine. I just don't really understand why the, the wife was in the narrative so much. You know, just like, I love my wife at the end. Well, it's more like, like, why does he keep going on about it? I mean, how many videos has he made on this topic now? How many podcasts well, has he that, been on? Well, that's another criticism people brought up as well, because it's two, it's like two to three serious videos in a row now, and I think people are just like, I watched you for Content Cop, where is it? Like, obviously, like, there, there won't be a Content Cop again, or if there you is, it'll be very, very different. should have skipped all the Froggy Fresh drama and just jumped straight to this apology video. Yeah, he should have yeah, just gone yeah, straight to he, this he, one. Yeah, he never should have touched that. I think uh, as well, like a lot of people were calling out how he's going to do a content cup on himself, like I roll. He kind of already has done that. I mean, he hasn't labeled it as a content cup, but yeah, go on. If he did like the skits and that, you know, put high effort into it, it would almost just be like an even bigger setting himself up for a fail. But it's almost like it, it is kind of cringe, but he got it out the way at least and that chapter of his life is behind. But one thing we were talking about before the podcast, which just shows how fucked the, the landscape is of YouTube, is Critical did a video talking about iDubbbz video and it literally got double the amount of views in less than a day. I don't think double, but it got more. It got more for sure. Yeah, just like, rea you know, just how the meta is right now, just reacting to other stuff like I do on Paraslop, Paralive. And then he did a response video seven hours later responding to the backlash like, fucking hell. and and both are like i haven't seen either one by the way and i'm not going yeah, to i'm not going to watch yeah, they're both either like of 17 to 25 <laughs> minutes long these videos i mean to be fair i've i've watched i've watched videos that are like 15 to 20 minutes 40 actually, minutes of fucking slop for like over an hour like you really can milk it if you try but yeah i just like how I, I, I'm seeing it from like a business side and I just see it as like a win for Charlie because it's like, you know, he made a video it got loads of views and then he made a video on the video and it's got loads of views so money Money. Yeah, I get. I guess you can relate because you can turn a fucking tweet into an eight-minute video. Oh, no, hundred yeah, no, percent. If, if that was me, if that was me, I'd be like, okay, W. I get to talk about you know the same thing, slightly different. What does the fucking world come to? Money, money, <laughs> money, money, money. Give me money. One of the things I've noticed people saying about his most recent video, Idubs, in this case. Why, why are you so mad that he's apologizing for the slurs that he made in the past? But of course, like, he's doing more than that. He's apologizing for a lot more than that. He's, like, ashamed of these content cops. And if we take, like, the Leafy one, for example, I mean, he's not using any slurs in that. All he does is criticize Leafy's chin for being chinless. I mean, that's pretty much the extent of it. And he's the ashamed of that. He that, thinks that though. was cruel. Like, he thinks that was cool. Did, did he mention... I don't think he mentioned Leafy directly, though, right? Well, he, he did also he did, say... The only one he mentioned directly was Tanner. Tanner. Yeah, he but did. He's keep in mind, he did... To, he's referring to all of his content cops as yeah, cruel. They were but cruel. he did say at one point, you know, some of you I don't like and I still won't like you, you know, implying the people that he made the content cop on. Like, it's not like he's completely done a complete 180. He just thinks that some of the angles... I mean, I swear the entire point of the Leafy content cop was to use ad hominem, like, attack him his character because that's what leafy did in his videos he was just maybe it was maybe it wasn't or maybe it was and he just kind of like got you know self-aware of it over time like oh this is kind of a, a weak video but even even given that even given that it wasn't cruel there was nothing cruel about it yeah the thing is mo most youtubers content like if they don't fall off it just evolves right it evolves over time <laughs> if you want if you want to move on from content pirate life <laughs> Hi. Hey, man, I still yeah. got Cruelty Squad, my one claim yeah, to that's fame. And then not I can, happening. Yeah, it's Cruelty Squad isn't happening, by the it's way, guys. I made it up. Yeah. I made it up, yeah. It's really what I was saying last time. You know, it's fine to move on. Just move on. No one cares. Move on. You want to make different content? It's very hard to make, you know, the type of content Ian was making today for obvious reasons all mentioned last time. But it's like, just do it. Hey, that's right? the Nike, just make that's the the Nike logo. Why, why do you have to constantly <laughs> like... <laughs> I just hear Jay laughing. <laughs> He's such a piece of shit. Oh, just you. You're giving this like big speech and you say, just do it. And Pyro's like, that's the Nike slogan. Like, he's such a <laughs> fucking ADHD zoomer. <laughs> <laughs> it just threw, it threw me off. Like I fucking didn't catch half of what you said. Could you? Fuck could it, you? Ow, who cares? ow, fuck. Ow, my leg cramped. Ow, ow. I, I tensed oh, up when I was laughing and I fucking cramped my leg. Such a piece of shit. <laughs> God. <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> it's a nice slogan. Uh, what, were we say <laughs> what were we saying about iDubs again? I iDubs had a, a Nike partnership halfway through the video. <laughs> oh, he did actually. He didn't have a sponsorship, but he did monetize his most recent one, which is an inter interesting choice. That's right. And it was going to like, wasn't it like a trans person of color charity or something? 
I think it's because of his catchphrase, or at least, you know, yeah. The, yeah, the it's, two it's words, almost like the two it, slurs it's not, that have it, been associated with Idubs, you know which well, ones I mean. Which is why he chose that specific no, challenge. It, it's, I think I've got he's that. He's right. trying to. He's not going to undo everything he's done in his videos, but by doing that, he's making a statement, which is obviously more important. No, no, no. In the video, he says. So in the video, he says, I'm going to give all the revenue to a charity that has been affected by my actions. There you go. Unlucky, Pyro. Unlucky. It's just funny that it does happen to be like the two things covered by the the worst, you know, the, the biggest slur he was saying. A lot of people have the angle that, you know, he's doing this to get the H3 audience that we just mentioned earlier. But I mean, you know, if he if he's looking at actually going into that kind of... It, it's hard to explain because I'm basically seeing a lot of YouTubers recently that are actually breaking out of YouTube and they're getting into the mainstream. Like, obviously, this isn't anywhere near Ian's content, but you've got Emma Chamberlain, for example. Uh, she's in, like, Vogue and stuff now, doing catwalks. Uh... And then, yeah, Eliza Koshi, uh, Pokimane as well recently. P Pokimane actually left uh, the OTK. No, no, not OTK. What group is she with again? OTV. Ah, oh, that was one letter off. Eh, close enough. A minus. But is yeah, that? she's ju she's just left. Uh, it's a streaming house, like a streaming group. But she's just left that recently because she wants to get into more of like the mainstream, like you know, kind of Gucci and stuff like that. So a lot of YouTubers do kind of do these to like you know e evolve and stuff evolve i mean it's evolving to make more money yeah okay well, wrong word get get more get more options get okay let's say get more options i'll meet you halfway like like more options because they're making this change this evolution this transition for financial gain that is the only reason yeah and, and more connections because you know if, if ian ever wanted to go mainstream okay, like, i'm sorry know, like... i'm sorry what do you think the connections are for they're a stepping stone to make more money Okay, yes, but like it's not for you can't say it's for money though. I think that's unfair to say it's for money. I think it's a I mean, major factor. I mean, I said last episode it was a minor one, and I think I've I've escalated that to major now. Yeah. Why? Why why now? Well, because this is the impression that I've got by listening to the things he said in the way that he said them. I'm thinking like what is his motivation here? Why has he chosen to do it this way? Why does he keep doing it? He's made multiple videos. He's been on multiple podcasts now. Why? Why keep going on about it? Because he wants to... He wants to clean his image. Okay, and why do you think he wants to clean his image? What motivation could he have for wanting to apologize for things he said and did, you know, many years ago? So I start thinking like, okay, well, what, what's happening here? And I think it's to do with his event, his boxing event, the Creator Clash, and the sponsors that Anissa has confirmed they're attempting to obtain. I think they've run into a few problems because these sponsors are going to do their due diligence. They're going to look into IDUB's past. They're not going to be invested or interested. I mean, it's a lot of money on the line here, obviously. They're not going to be invested in someone like IDUB's when he's got this history. So now he's attempting, whether through advice he's taken directly, indirectly, or on his own initiative, to rectify this in order to obtain the sponsors that he's not getting. His ESG score is too low. No, I can't. Yeah, no, I mean, that that ESG meme, like, yeah, Jay, Jay's saying it is a meme, but yeah, I, I mean, you've worded it in a good way there, because I can imagine, like, sponsors for Creator Clash, like, more mainstream ones. It's like, yeah, we could, we could work with you, but you did say this stuff in the past. Here's a video where you're saying NF. You know, you're saying this, you're saying that, you're making fun of people here and there. Yeah. It's all online, and not only is it online, it's got millions of views. All right, so of course they're doing the research, they're checking up because there's a lot of money involved. So this is coming back to IDubs and Anissa and they're looking at it and going, right, well, we need to do something about it. But you're not saying all of it is because of for money. No, that's not what I said when I first said it, no. Got you. And you don't give him props for doing what you said he sh should do? <laughs> the deletion of videos that doesn't hasn't sway swayed you in any way? I mean... Basically, it was just to point out, like, okay, there's some hypocrisy here because the videos are still up. So when you now eliminate that hypocrisy, albeit very late, yeah, I mean, why should I? You want me to give him props for that? No, I more can't. just like, more just like, ah, oh, well, he he might be serious then. How many videos has he actually uploaded now in a row? Just addressing kind of drama. Is it two or three? I think it's just two. Two on the main channel, but obviously like multiple podcasts now. 
Oh, right. True. The Padilla podcast. I mean, if he wants to break into that sphere that like, yeah, like, for example, Anthony's in that kind of L.A. wholesome sphere, then, yeah, he's he's going the best way about it. Self-esteem issues or like self-confidence about what the fuck is going on? Fucking it is bucketing down. It's just started bucketing down. Is it you hail? Water in Mexico? Are you living in a- <laughs> no, it's like really heavy rain. You're like a little tin shack in a favela. No, like, where I'm the not, fuck are I'm you? I'm in my apartment, but it's like unbelievably heavy rain. Good you game. Should get, Have like, you played that? You should no, get, no, the, uh, get the buckets good. out, because that's probably the only water you'll get this year. Fucking hell. Why is it so okay. loud? Is it the roof? Yeah, so it's like um, a skylight. There's a skylight in the room. And that's what it's- the rain is bouncing off, but it's extremely heavy rain. I mean, it's very yeah, we loud. Can hear. Are you sure it's just not someone pissing on your roof? <laughs> it's so loud. I know, I'm when you wait for it when to you stop. When you speak, it's alright, but... Okay, then. Uh, give, it, give it a minute here. It'll stop, like, within, within one to two minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I like how we delayed the podcast like five times, and then we oh, finally don't, don't do even, it. Don't even start like pyro. Blame pyro for this shit. Oh no, no, I blame, am. blame me for the rain. And All then right. the <laughs> yeah, and then blame pyro for the rain as well. Yeah, cheers, mate. If we transition into the sponsor, we can. I can do the sponsor while the fucking rain is going on. Okay, that could be kind of funny, actually. <clears throat> you should do the ad read whilst the rain's in the background. <laughs> That's what I just said! That's that that what is what he said. said. That is what he said, yeah. I didn't hear, I didn't hear. Can we get Nike as a sponsor for the next episode? Yeah, you can get it. You can fucking get it. Uh, I don't... Well, I can't... Oh, yeah, I did do 31 kilometers in an hour. Yeah, maybe I might. Maybe I could be an ambassador. <laughs> oh, we should, do... we should talk about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to beat your fucking time, Oliver. I can't do it. I can't do it. You're not even close. You're I, no, so I did. Far I off. did. What? I did 5k in like uh, 25 minutes. That's, that's the not that bad. Got, though. That's not. That's not bad. Fuck off! Your last one was 23 minutes. That's so close. There is a massive difference, now. Sorry to say. Yeah. Like no, I'm not. I'm not trying to put you down, but there is a huge difference. And go smoke and die. Plus Colossus <laughs> <laughs> Plus Colossus has been running Colossus has been running like his whole life. And then the moment he stopped cigarettes, he just got a fucking energy boost. Anyways, the rain has stopped. Let's get the fucking sponsor out of the way. Do you wanna you guys wanna do the sponsor this time? No. Uh, I could do it. Make a nice change. Pyro could do it. I need I need the talking points. I posted them in the chat. I can't read. Yeah, but that requires scrolling up like two seconds. I just see a black kid stealing a dog. Where's the... Where is it? Just a black kid stealing a dog. Yeah, I hope your plane crashes tomorrow, now. Oh, I see it. VPN sponsor. All right, hang on. Okay, all right. <clears throat> I'm going to do it now. It's shocking to me that in 2022, every parent... What the fuck? Was oh, it no. What it's... are you fucking about? That's what it says. <laughs> are you illiterate? Every parent. Yeah, but then you stopped. I could try. Go again. No, no. Yeah, no. Too, I just don't too many words. Put, at, too many what, words. I don't understand once. why they put every parent. Like you don't uh, have the majority to, think about, to be don't, honest, don't, parents. Don't overthink it. Just read it. Uh, it's shocking. Oh, what do I even say? It's shocking to me that in 2022, every colossal is crazy, dull and dark, and parasitical viewer hasn't installed ExpressVPN on their kids' devices. <laughs> <laughs> like they are the child. You wouldn't want your kids. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want you your suck. favorite YouTuber. What? Oh, this sucks. Yeah, this is all about. What's I it came. About? Like, no, I'm saying you. I'm saying you suck. I got, I got so complacent with Colossal's ad reading. I didn't know what I was missing out. Do you want to keep going? Do you want to try again? Yeah, I could try again. It's shocking to me that in 2022, if wait, oh yeah. It's shocking oh to me. It's God. Oh, Oliver, just you take over. You take over. This is embarrassing. <laughs> you you didn't even so, read. It's so. It, it's all about. You didn't even read a sentence. Kids. Yeah, but just read it anyway. It's funny. They had a sentence about windowless vans, so you know, it just hit a bit too close to home for me. The worst part is, I mean, that's two lines down. You didn't even get to that sentence. <laughs> he didn't even finish the sentence. Well, it's because it's nothing. To, it's shocking to me that in 2022, every parent hasn't ins installed ExpressVPN on the kids' Don't think about it like a fucking autist. You just logic. read it. 
You just read it, Niall. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. You know, it's shocking to me that in 2022, every parent I'm has installed ExpressVPN on hope you their can hear the kids' crunching. devices. Like, you wouldn't wait, let wait, your why kids is he just walk allowed home to from school we're not reading without it, telling them words. not to talk to strangers he does it every time. or get into any windowless vans. So why I, I was trying to turn it into my own thing, though, because this doesn't appeal to, to be honest with you. You see, every device, every phone, Pretty every hard. computer, every tablet, it has its own unique IP. Address, well, I could I could have like done that. I could have read all of it, and it reveals personal it. information I mean, about you. No, no, no. Like, I'm eating. No, no, I, 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 I can read for word for word. I'm not fucking dyslexic, retard. I'm just saying, like, you've got to turn it into your own thing. If you've ever clicked on a sketchy link, pirate, Pyro. or opened an email with a bugged image, your IP address <laughs> could be exposed. <laughs> well, who knows what kind of Hi. creeps, Pyro, could physically Hi. track your kids down using their IP address. But ExpressVPN is an app that hides your real IP address and replaces it with a <laughs> dummy one, keeping you safe <laughs> and private. It's so easy to use. Just download the ExpressVPN app on your phone or computer. Tap one button to turn it on, and you're protected. Even my five-year-old can figure You've it out. Kids? Yes, I do. And here's the coolest part about ExpressVPN. VPN. They let you choose what country you want your IP address to look like it's coming from. <laughs> this is super useful because services like Netflix and Disney Plus give you different shows depending on what country you're in. Nothing. My kids, brackets, and I love this because we can just switch our country and get hundreds of extra shows for free. Like just this weekend, we used ExpressVPN to change our country and watch Cleopatra, which is uh, yeah, available on, I think it's available that. in every country, so it's not a very good example, but you get the picture. So, Egypt. secure your family's online activity Egypt, and unlock tons of new shows by visiting no expressvpn.com no slash tbh. Use my link and you can get three extra months free. That's <laughs> expressvpn.com slash tbh. Visit expressvpn.com slash tbh to learn more. Like the only That's person. how you do it, Pyro. That is how you do it. <laughs> Oliver, can you look at what I DM'd you? <laughs> oh, fucking hell. What is this now? Just look at the clip of them. <laughs> oh, my fucking, my fucking stomach hurts. Oh, be sick. <laughs> we're gonna, gonna we're gonna keep right. that in, but we're not gonna oh, keep in what oh we're laughing about. God. So everyone will just wonder what the fuck it was. Oh my god! Uh, so do you want to talk about the uh, the little black fella from the UK who's breaking into people's houses for a funny TikTok video? No? Yeah, I mean. It's kind of been a trend for a while, to be fair, in the UK. It's not like it's, you know, it's it's him that just started it, but he's the one that definitely, like, everyone got, like, he got, like, international attention for it. But, yeah, like, there was a trend. I mean, Critical covered this, like, a month ago. Basically, there was, like, a, a TikTok trend of people, like, you know, going into KFCs, into McDonald's, and they'd be, you know, just harassing the workers, and then they'd jump behind the counter. And then it's genius, because you have these kids, and they're literally, like, 12, right? They jump the counter, they go in the back, and then you've got these poor fucking underpaid, like, you know, minimum wage workers telling them to leave. And then they say, like, oh, don't, don't, don't touch me, because I'll call the cops, tell you molested me. You know, just using the fact that they're, like, a kid as a fucking advantage as well, because they know that they're not going to get charged or anything, because they're all little little toddlers but yeah it's basically blown up now because one kid uh called mizzy and he's been doing this shit for a while it's not his actual name there's no way he's actually called mizzy nah nah it's just tiktok handle yeah it's mizzy 
But yeah, it, he started off with like some kind of smaller pranks. Like he'd go up to, you know, a random guy in the street and, you know, act like it was his dad, like his long lost dad. So like, you know, stuff like that. And that was kind of funny. But then the, the classic TikTok mindset is like, I've always got to outdo what I did previously. So it just leads to like classic. Got to escalate it. Got to keep escalating it. Make it worse. Make it more insane. But yeah, there was one there was one TikTok where he filmed himself stealing a dog, which is obviously like pretty traumatic for the dog owner. I'm sure he gave the dog back afterwards. He's also just going up to people and asking them if they want to die. Like, straight up, do you want to die? Oh, no, but that's the, the yeah, yeah, but that, that that's a common trend that, like, not Missy's just been doing that, but but loads of people in London, you know, they'll dress up like balaclavas on and that, and then they'll run up to people and, like, they'll do, you know, funny miscommunication or misconception. Like, they're making it out that they're threatening them, but then it's like, oh, it's a joke, I didn't actually mean that, I meant something else. Like, you know, do you want to die? It's like, oh, no, I was asking for hair dye. If you came up to me in public and said, do you want to die? I'd be like, fucking what? Yeah, you know who I am, you fucking moron. Uh, no, you, no, no, you know if I didn't know who you were, and you're just a random stranger who came up to me on the street and asked me if I wanted to die, I'd be like, what? All right, what if I what if I came dressed in a fursuit and said that? Oh, I'd just run you over. <laughs> I mean, that's, don't even have to think about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just roadkill at that point. It's fine, it's legal. It, it'd be the one time where killing in public was self-defense and everyone would just applaud Oliver. But yeah, uh, he, he did that stuff, but again, he he, start, he didn't start that. Like, he's basically just doing trends and pranks like everyone else did. But what he did that no one else has really done is he got all of his uh, his boys, and then they basically were just going into random people's homes. And they filmed themselves going into, like, someone's home, and it looked like a pretty... Wait, like, so what was the trend? Go uh, just, just, being a, he, just being a dickhead in public, it's pretty pranks. much. Like, it's funny, it's YouTube pranks, but of course you can't do YouTube pranks on YouTube anymore, so now they're TikTok pranks. That's pretty much it. In London, in the UK, it's a pretty common trend where you go up to people, like, you know, pretend you're in, like, a gang or something, and then, like, you know, uh, act like you're threatening them, but then at the end you give right. them, like, a phone or some money or something, and it's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You probably only have money. slight PTSD, but here's $50. The thing is, though, like, it, it's different with him going into people's homes because usually, like, you see these kind of comments where they go up to someone and they start, like, threatening them, and then it's like, hey, you get a phone. Everyone in the comments is like, Lamau, that was a mad ting crying emoji, you know, just thinking it's absolutely hilarious. But this is the first time that they've done a prank and, like, everyone fucking hates it. Everyone has just, it, it's completely backfired. Because so he basically walked into a guy's house, uh, and then the woman notices she's outside gardening. She calls the husband because she's like bricking it, thinking like, oh shit, we're being robbed. And then the dad comes up the stairs and the dad's like pretty calm and collected. But the thing is, I think what set most people like against the group in the video is the fact you can see a literal fucking toddler downstairs. I don't know what he's watching, like fucking Mr. Beast, probably watching Hassan or something going like L ratio in the chat. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and slot. then uh, <laughs> they, they, they come in and they're like, oh shit. Like they, they see the kid and then they kind of realize, okay, maybe this has gone a little bit too far. Cause you know, the guy he doesn't says though, he point, doesn't, he goes into the sitting room and sits on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so the dad of the house, what is he even saying to them? No, no, no. So, so they walk in into the house under the guise of like, you know, we're going to say it's like, like a prank or something but then they say like oh we thought it was like a student meeting or something you know some kind of like i don't know some fucking like violin club or some shit oh, like saying they <laughs> just got the wrong house sort of thing yeah they just pull out a violin do a little concerto but yeah uh, and then when they spot the kids some of them you can hear in the background like oh shit you know kind of realizing they went a bit too far and then if they pulled out then and posted it you'd still probably have people in the comments saying lamau that was a madness crying emoji but because they kept pushing it after that, that's when people were like, okay, that's way too far now. So like, yeah, like like Oliver said, he just literally goes and like sits on the living room couch when the dad comes up the stairs, acting like it's his house. And he's such a little maggot. You, he positions his phone by the door of the living room where he just walked in, hoping the dad walks in and like rages at him or something, you know, just for content. Like, like his brain is literally just wired. Like, how do I make this into content? What are the chances that it's fake? Because it's a pretty nah, easy he thing got, to fake. He got banned. He got banned on uh, TikTok. Some people were making videos like mocking him and then he like proper went for them saying like you know i'll you know come to like my area and i'll like shank you and shit like he he really got tilted he should he should try that in america and see how long it lasts before he gets shot in the head but yeah like literally you can see the dad at one point and he's literally just saying to them like almost pleading with them like you know we've got kids like he never gets aggressive saying like you know like, get out get out of my house but he just says to them at one point, like, we got kids, like, almost just really disappointed in them. But yeah, legit, like, if you saw a bunch of people, like, rush your house, like, like running inside your house, you'd think, oh, fuck, I'm getting robbed. Yeah, of course. And then obviously you've got people like, you know, that are just actually racist, making it all about race and shit. It's like, no, it's it's not the case. Like, if there's a bunch of like fucking white kids or like Asian kids running in, like, it's the exact same response. Like, you would actually think you're getting fucking robbed. 
But yeah, after that, his TikTok got banned or he shut it down. I'm not really sure. But he, yeah, I think he was like bragging about it and stuff at one point as well. But yeah, I mean, people like that, that do those kinds of like content in London, it is literally just a dime a dozen. There's so many. And when they get views, other people will be like inspired to do it as well. But yeah, I just like how you had people making parody videos, you know, how like it was filming the house that they're walking into. But then when it shows them going inside the house, it'll cut to someone else's house and they'll be wearing like a, a balaclava, like shoving them away with a broom or something. Is that a parody as much as they've just started faking it now? Like I said, it's a very easy thing to fake. And that's what they were doing on YouTube. They were doing these pranks for real. And then eventually, like they realized, oh, we could actually get in trouble for this. And also it would be a lot easier if we just faked it. So that's what they started doing. So why isn't why haven't they started doing that on TikTok yet? Are they just too fucking stupid to have figured it out? Wait, doing what on TikTok? Faking it, faking it, faking these pranks. Ah, uh, well, because they're very easy to fake. Why do they have to do it for real? I mean, the TikTok little midgets, the little midget children on TikTok, they're going to eat it up. They're not going to realize it's uh, it's fake. So why haven't they started doing that already? It, on it, honestly, with the way it works for them, it's probably easier and just less time consuming to just do it legit. This is what you do. You just go to the f a family that you know and you arrange with them. Can we come into your house, pretend like we're trespassing here? We'll give you a hundred bucks, hundred quid, whatever, to let us do this and film it. Well, well, there you go. Like, that's that's the first that's the first L, though. Like, they're already a hundred quid down. Like, they're not making much money off these TikToks. Like, TikTok pays fuck all. They're getting millions of views, but like they're getting no money off it. Like, unironically, they are literally just doing this for like for fun in their spare time. You mentioned it in the Patreon episode, but you actually went and flew to meet the creator of Cruelty Squad, right? The video that's not coming out ever. I uh, I went to Helsinki in Finland and I interview uh, the game's creator. What voice? What voice is this? Just average Nordic, Nordic person. Well, he he was Finnish, but yeah. I mean, my girlfriend sounds like that as well, to be fair, so. Did he make you finish? It was a little gay meeting. Yeah, he sucked me off a little bit. I was like, no, stop. <laughs> and then I lifted up my skirt and he was like, no, 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 you'll come. <laughs> what? The fuck? Keep, keep that in. You want me to keep that in, do you? <laughs> He's got, the guy's going to be like, okay, can you not involve me in any shape or form? Nah, he was, he was super now? friendly to speak to and he, he gave me a lot of context to the game as well. He was, because uh, I didn't want to, like, you know, do this Lissad analysis and then, you know, because I, I said to him before we did the interview, look at the questions. And I just looked straight at him, like, hoping he didn't just roll his eyes and go like, oh, what the fuck is this? Can we have something juicy uh, for you? Well, not for me. I don't give a shit. But, like, for your subscribers, something juicy. Uh, he did go on about the next game that he's making, which Ooh. is really interesting. But is it under NDA or are you allowed to speak about that? Nah, nah, I, c I can talk. It it's literally in the interview, but he mentioned how he wants to make it like, uh, I don't know if any of you played Morrowind, the Elder Scrolls game, like the really old one. Yeah, you know, well, nah, like, like any kind of <laughs> Bethesda has. game, you know how there's like branching <laughs> dialogue and stuff? Yeah. He, he wanted to make it like that. So he wanted to make each conversation kind of like diverging because in Cruelty Squad, like if you talk to an NPC, they'll just have like one to three random lines of dialogue usually. But he wanted to yeah, actually like make every each... Game. Yeah, he wanted to make each person a character. But yeah, again, because he's only a one person team. It's like, uh, yeah, see that in like a decade, I guess, lol. I just love seeing all the people like that were saying like, no, Pyro's going to bring all his little Zuma fans and ruin the game. It's like, yes. I will. Hello. Well, didn't he say to you, you told me this the other day, but didn't he say like, yeah, he already hates the fan base. Yeah, anyway. I, I did. So. I did say to him as an offhanded joke at one point, I said like, oh, well, you know, I, I do want to say like, like Villa, I'm really sorry because I'm basically going to bring on my little Zuma fans over to the game and they're just going to ruin the community. And then he just like, you know, laughed and says, oh, well, the, it was already cancer anyway, the community. So don't worry about it. Do you have a release date for the video yet? This month. Uh, like it, it, it's there's only nine days in the left yeah the but, well, but we are literally two like when this comes after out. after the green screen stuff is done i mean the worst case scenario it could <laughs> oh, yeah. be like yeah the fucking know, right? idiot so pyro's shot a bunch of footage with green glasses on in front of a green screen i thought it would have looked cool i thought it would have looked trashy which is like the aesthetic of the game but yeah well, no, no because the entirety of the glasses get fucking yeah. removed as well when it, you it, chroma key yeah it, it just looks so just bad, so. <laughs> you're giving your poor fucking editor matthew fucking like 10 more hours of work <laughs> to rotoscope everything out so yeah the interview went really well and obviously i kind of realized with the cruelty squad that I need to get more editors to kind of help with future projects because I don't want to like, yes. you know, finish Cruelty Squad and then be like, oh, thank God that's done. And then it's another six months until a video because yeah, at that rate, burn, it literally is two videos a year. Out. 
Yeah, I, I basically put together like an application form to kind of try to round more editors up. And I gave them a bit of the Cruelty Squad video that was already kind of edited and spliced. Because kind yeah. of, I feel anyone can do that even on a base level. But I said like, how can you make this kind of yours? Like what kind of editing can you do on top of it? But also to fit your channel, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you could be the most talented editor in the world. But if you don't get the kind of flow and stuff, then yeah, it's it's Jova. What I can do, actually, hang on. I'm going to I'm gonna go through the submissions now and just see if there's any kind of... Oh, here's one. Here's one, yeah. So this is a submission that someone made uh, with the footage that I, I gave them. The footage that I, I recorded in Cruelty Squad. So that that is just not even anything to do with the fucking gameplay or the video. It's just a scene from Mad Max with the meme caption, <laughs> cutting out that wisdom tooth with the dollar store butter knife. Just absolutely nothing to do with it at all. What's the joke there? It, it's not. It's just like he, he's acting like, you know, it's a submission to be an editor. And then he just uploaded complete random garbage. No, there's no way he's fucking with you. No, yeah, he is. He is. Uh, yeah, it probably jokes. is bait. Here's one. Here's one. So the editing slot, right? The actual edit that I gave them to work with is about a minute long. So this guy right. here just made the most cancer edit imaginable, like hood irony. Like watermarked yeah. his own fucking edit. And then he just proceeded to upload an entire episode of Rick and Morty <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and it's it's 24 minutes and long. Then it's, and then it's the Pickle Rick. It's the Pickle Rick episode as well. You had this big form asking like experience and what they edit on. And like so many people just said they used pirated software. Like they just admitted to you they're just pirating the software. Yeah, that's right. I, I remember someone, one of the questions was like, what's your editing experience? And then they just said, I don't edit. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I man. see one here. None. They, you ask what country they're based on, and they just replied with a flying foot with leg. With, uh, no, they replied <laughs> with eagles. Like, what? So we've had, I, I'm looking at the amount of submissions now. We've got 194 submissions, 196 submissions. So not as many as I thought, to be fair. Yeah, have you processed which ones are serious? Because I'm looking at here now. How much editing experience do you have? None. Which country are you based in? Tilted Towers. <laughs> and then <laughs> what language do you speak fluently? And they've just said Joe Biden. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just the worst, the worst jokes. Are you vetting these or are you handing them off to like a fucking poor intern? Yes, you've asked for their Twitter handle. He's just put your Twitter handle. <laughs> What editing software do you use? He says, I've never edited. And then the next thing says, how much editing experience do you have? And he says, I've edited for 20 years. <laughs> uh, someone's just said they have 300,000 karma on Reddit for their editing. <laughs> I'm looking at Paul and Princess Peach right now. <laughs> right. Well, that's the end, I suppose. Just, just end the podcast on that. <laughs>